This is the 2021 Cadillac Escalade. There are a lot of options. There are five different models. There are two different trim directions, luxury and sport, two engine options, and a lot more technology. You want to take a look at this one. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. If this is your first time to the channel, we do a lot more than just cool car reviews. We give you first looks of new vehicles that we're just seeing on the marketplace, and we give you car smarts because we believe knowledge is power. We're gonna take a look at the 2021 Cadillac Escalade. Our test vehicles are always loaded, so we wanna show you all the features that are available. We will go through this in 10 different categories because salesmen wanna sell you on this car, we want to give you information so you know what you're buying. We're going to cover performance, handling, safety, visibility, seating comfort, technology, features or options. We're going to show you design and quality, value. We're going to tell you cargo space, and then we'll give you a car coach reports total, and you can compare it to its competitors. And when it comes to this Escalade, it really has two competitors, the Mercedes GLS, the big one, and the Lincoln Navigator, which is true direct competitor. There's a lot of differences between this vehicle. The new Escalade is longer. It is lower by two inches. It has more storage space, and it is going head to head with the Navigator, which is also new. So when you start looking at these comparatives, make sure you test drive each vehicle before you make a final decision. Yes, there are other vehicles that offer three rows in a full size, but the main competitors in this market segment are really the Navigator and the Escalade. These are the luxury premium big boys, and you probably want to take both of them for a drive and check your insurance agent for the rates before you make a final decision. Let's go in this vehicle, let's take it for a drive and look at all the variants and there is a lot. So stay with us, come on, let's go. Under the hood are two engine options, a gas powered 6.2 liter engine with 420 horsepower or my favorite, the three liter diesel, which is great for towing, gives you a lot more capability with 460 pound feet of torque. Both are backed by 10 speed automatic transmissions. It's always fun to launch a cabin cruiser. This is the 6.2 liter V8, 460 pound feet of torque, same as in the diesel. Not as good a fuel economy as in the diesel. This thing is a big boat, but it does get up and go. And I think that's really important. Fuel economy, 21 miles to the gallon in the city, 27 on the highway. That's with the gasoline version. We don't have the full specs on the diesel. That'll be coming out real soon. I'm sure they're gonna send us one and we'll review it for you. When it comes to moving a vehicle of this size, it's important to note that if you want all wheel drive, it is an additional $3,000 on all the trim levels. And the trim levels either go sport or luxury direction. Again, that's something that you decide based on whether you want to look sportier, which I would prefer, or luxurious, which some other people might prefer. I like to have a balance of both, actually. And if you want the longer wheelbase, which I recommend if you're hauling a lot of gear and it's really important, uh, that's gonna be an additional $3,000. And it's probably worth it, especially when it comes to resale, but keep in mind, it may not fit in your garage something to think about. Overall, when you're looking at the performance of this vehicle as a daily driver, it has really good get up and go. It's a bit loud, but overall the cabin is quieter than the previous generation. And when it comes to performance, this Escalade earns an eight. There are a lot of changes on the new Escalade. One of them is an all independent suspension. That's great. That allowed them to lower the vehicle, which also allowed them to add some more goodies to this vehicle, which includes magnetic ride. So when you change the mode and you want a softer ride, it changes everything. The shocks, the shift points, the ride comfort, all those things that are important. And when you want to go to a sportier mode, it'll adjust that as well. When you go into the sport mode and you put your foot in it, it sounds really good. I think they did a nice job of changing that. The mode button is on the left. It is right next to the hill descent, so it's really easy to press. The other modes that are available are off-road, tow haul, touring, which is your more comfort ride, and I prefer the sport. And that gives you a better handling vehicle if you want that tighter handling. There is also air ride suspension on the new Escalade. This is very similar to what you're seeing on the Tahoe. Lots of these variants. It allows you to raise the suspension up and down as needed. And that's really important because some people want to do that. Another additional suspension or handling feature on this vehicle is electronic limited slip. The brakes are bigger, they are really aggressive, and I have to say they've done a nice job. It's not over the top. I'm really impressed with all of the changes in this vehicle because it's like the Tahoe, it has similar 
characteristics. So if you don't want to spend that much, but you want everything that the Cadillac has, take a look at the Tahoe. We've got a review listed up here. You can check that out. And I think you'll find the same type of really cool features so you can get a lot for your money. When it comes to handling and braking and ride comfort, because all those are big important features of owning any vehicle, this Escalade earns an eight. There are a lot of safety features that are standard on the Cadillac. This surround view camera is important because all these cameras help you with cross traffic alert, lane departure warning, and also forward collision warning. Now the forward collision emergency braking really frustrated me at one point. I was backing up in my driveway and I have a line of trees as you see in the beginning and it thought it was something else and it slammed on the brake. So it was a bit aggressive so you can adjust that down. For me, I just I don't need that, I know it's a tree, but it didn't know that because it's a computer. So this is part of the things you have to think about as we get more and more computer controlled. These are factors that might be an issue to you. Maybe you want them on, you can shut them off as well. Some of the really nice features that are safety related is my favorite is the camera that's in the rear view mirror. Makes a huge difference. One of the features that when you put on your rear view mirror is you have a camera actually in back 180 degrees, really a big safety feature. You can see what's going on around you. I think that's really important. You don't have to leave it on all the time, but it does give you some options. Another safety feature that you may need, especially if you drive in wooded areas, is night vision. It is $2,000, but what it does do is shows you things at night that you cannot see. And that is something that Cadillac developed a long time ago. They were first to market with this. So anyone that says they've got it, it came from Cadillac. And it comes right here in the screen in front of you. So you would see based on the camera being on, just like with the Super Cruise system, which is a big part of the technology. You can check out our Super Cruise separate video, which we'll be posting on our channel. Also check out the Super Cruise system and how it works. Super Cruise is a basically a level three self-driving. It is not self-driving nor is anything on the market today but Super Cruise is as close as you're going to get. It's got tons and tons and millions of miles of testing and the results have been excellent and one of the best systems available on the market if this is something you want besides lane centering. You put on the turn signal, it knows, but there is times you do have to take over. So it's really important that you get very comfortable with Super Cruise. It'll tell you what to do on the steering wheel. You need to follow those directions and you do need to pay attention. In addition, you'll find that there is a front camera. If you want the front camera on while you're driving, you can actually see the road in front of you. It is neat, but you're also looking out the front, but then you have the camera in front of you. So if you're worried about potholes or maybe something in the roadway, that is something you have to get comfortable with using and turning on quickly because you're not going to have much time in many cases. There are a ton of safety features on this Escalate and I'm really impressed with them. They've been first to market on a lot of things like the camera, the night vision, the super cruise. And because of that, there is no question in my mind when it comes to safety, the new Escalade earns a 10. When it comes to a vehicle of this size, you really need to see the roadway. And the front windshield is a good size. And the side sills, the where you put your arm basically, is on a reasonably height. So you can see what's going on. But in a vehicle this size, you really need to have cameras. This vehicle has a round view camera because you need that. And also when you go to that rear view mirror and you press this switch over, you get a backup camera that is a 180 degree camera. It was designed by Cadillac, it was the first to market with this, and they continue to bring that as part of a Cadillac standard, which I think should be there anyhow. Now this is something you would need on a vehicle of this size. So when you're looking out the back, if you're just looking here right out the back, you can see that you've got the headrest for the second row and the third row, which are down on the third row, but the visibility is pretty good. And that's important. But in a vehicle, again, of this size, rear cross traffic alert, the backing up that part of the safety systems that we talked about. If you're in reverse, you're backing up. There's someone there, a pedestrian, a child, something, the vehicle will stop. So there's a lot of safety involved as well as in the visibility. When you're looking at visibility overall for this vehicle, because of the additional cameras and safety features that are built in, visibility earns a nine. When it comes to seating comfort, this is critical. You're gonna ride in this vehicle, whether it's the driver's side or the passenger side, and they've really done a nice job thinking about the comfort. Now remember, they're going head to head with some of the big brands like Lincoln and Mercedes. You need to be bringing your A-game, and they did. They brought us multiple way power seats with massaging, heated and ventilated, both driver and passenger side, as well as lumbar, which I really appreciate. And that is a four way lumbar, so you can adjust up and down as well as in and out. This makes it comfortable on a long ride, whether you switch drivers or not. Really well thought out because some vehicles, not the premiums, 
don't have that. So you got to really look at those when you're looking at the competitive set out there. Do they offer that? Also, adjustable height seat belts is really nice. So you can just adjust that up and down as needed because you don't want that seat belt cutting your neck. Really important things that a lot of people don't think about when it comes to seating. Of course, the adjustable steering wheel, which you can bring that out as well. Here's a tip, by the way, a car smarts tip. You never want the center of the steering wheel to be closer than 12 inches to the center of your chest. The reason for that is if an airbag deploys, you don't want to get injured. So 12 inches is the minimum. You don't want to go way back either. So try to be around that one foot area. It really is the smartest way to get the most safety if God forbid you're in an accident. Now seating comfort is really nice up here and they've done a lot to think about the people using it, especially in the massaging, which is my favorite on a long road trip. Let's take a look at the second and third row and we'll give you a rating. In the second row, there is a ton of space. I'm 5'8", there's a ton of headroom, there's shoulder room. These are the captain's chairs. You can also get a bench seat here. The captain's chairs make it a lot easier to access the third row, especially for adults. Now, the other thing to think about is you've got a ton of niceties back here in the second row besides the heated seats. In addition, you've got your own climate control and tons of charging places. You get USB-C, you've got an HDMI if you want to use these entertainment screens, which we'll talk about in features. That is something that a lot of people would like to have. Now, in addition to that, they give you wireless headsets. Of course, you're paying for all this. Nothing is a gift in these type of things. Power locks, you've got the audio system right here, and you have ventilation up above, which is nice. Really well thought of in speakers as well. These seats do move forward and back, so you can adjust them for child safety seats, or if someone in the third row needs just a touch more leg room. Going back to the third row, now, I'm sitting in the center for a reason. One, I want you to see me, but two, on each side is a cup holder. On each side is USB-C. And these headrests can go down if you're not using them or up if someone's sitting here. Now, if I slide over to the one side, there's plenty of leg room depending upon where you adjust the seat. I'm 5'8 and I'm all legs, but the headroom, I would say if I was six feet tall, you're probably gonna be a bit tight. Someone in the middle would be the most comfortable because they can stretch their legs out. But as far as getting three adults here, I think it's going to be a little bit tight unless they're on the smaller side. But looking at everything that comes with this vehicle, the improvement is dramatic. There is more legroom than previous Escalades, and there is more than most of the vehicles in this category. And having the adjustability is really needed when it comes to families and road trips. So when you're looking at seating overall, the Cadillac Escalade earns a nine. There is a ton of technology on these vehicles. This is a 36 inch curved OLED screen. This is really cool. It's a total of 38 inches. It is equivalent to a 4K television. Now the system includes three screens. So you've got one here, you've got a screen over here on the left, which includes your head up display. And then over here, you've got your multimedia interface. Really well done. And everything here is amazing because it all integrates together. The center screen here is 14.2 inches. This one is 16.9, you start adding it all up. Now, why do you need all of these screens? You need it for the Super Cruise technology. This also is good for the night vision. It's good for the navigation. You can move the navigation to an in cluster so it's right here in front of you. So they've really thought about the actual usage of this vehicle. Now, just to give you an idea, what you get here on your left, this is set up for my trip. So I've got my mileage, my average fuel economy. You can reset, you can change your head up display. All the choices are over here. When you get to the center screen in front of you, you have, of course, a speedometer. You've got your mileage and how many miles per gallon and your tachometer. So that's your fuel economy. This is your tachometer. Now you can change all this. Besides the fact you have your heated steering wheel right here, you've got all of your cruise control and your safety distance is right here. On this side, this is for audio and this is pretty simple to use. Your stocks are normal, wiper blades on this side, headlights on the other. And again, all this can be adjusted, including the paddle shifts, which you might need these paddle shifts when you're uh, trailer towing. So it's something to consider. Moving over to the center screen, you hit that home button. It's, it's very easy to use. This is very tactile. Uh, we'll start off with the simple one, which is your audio system. Now this is wireless Bluetooth, wireless Android Auto. It, it connects up right away. You've got Wi-Fi in the car, Sirius XM, AM, FM, Bluetooth, and there's a whole list of Alexa, of course, is in here as well. So this is everything you would need right here. And I think that's really makes it easy for your favorites and so forth. You can change your channels. You can pick your type of music that you want. You can browse. 
very easy to use. Next, you would go to your navigation. Now, this is neat. The navigation is pretty normal, anything you would see otherwise. And all of your settings and adjustments are here, very easy to use. That is, makes it easy. Also, there is an adjuster straight down here. You can see right down just below the shifter that also gives you those same controls gives you lots of options. And I really do appreciate that because some manufacturers don't allow you to touch the screen. So you can also have this rear seat request. And we'll show you this when you get back to the features section. You can have the rear seats allow them to see the navigation. I think that's kind of neat as well. And you can pick your settings as far as more settings. You, there's a lot of steps to go through this. So you really need to take the time to go through and learn all the different steps. Take the time with the salesperson who sells you the vehicle to go through all of that delivery so you know how everything works because you wanna make sure that if you do want the navigation moved in front of you or you don't, you have that setting available to you. Again, this is all where you can show the map it shows you what you want, and it's neat how it's at an angle. It reminds me of a little Star Wars. I don't know, it's, it's just because it's, it's all at an angle. You know, it's kind of cool. So when you're looking at the map itself, that's pretty simple. You've got your telephone here, pretty simple to connect. Wireless, you don't have to plug in, which I do appreciate. And then there's information on the vehicle itself. This will give you your oil life. I really like the tire pressure monitoring system giving you corner ratings. That's nice, and you can slide it across. Gives you fuel economy. So it's your average speed. There's a lot of journalists driving this, so don't look at this fuel economy as yours, but the best they had was 24.6, average 14.1. Uh, then you've got, of course, your battery life, your oil pressure, and other information that you would need. So they've really thought about things you might need at certain times. If you're towing, you'll want coolant and transmission temperatures. If not, don't worry about that. There's also a trailer towing package when it's added. There's a, a whole setup of getting that information on the trailer, so that's important as well. Lots of great information you would need all the hours and so forth. So they, they really thought about your usage of this. Now going back to that home screen, this is just one of three different pages. There's a park assist function as well. You can turn that on and off. I suggest you leave it on. This is your normal, what you would expect to see. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, your users, your Wi-Fi, your rear climate control, your vehicle information. And then you got trailering. Now this is interesting. The trailer towing is between 7,500 and 7,700 pounds. So you would tell it what you're using and it would show you how to set up the distance so you can back up without having someone back there telling you to you know come closer move to the left or the right it's also really good when you have blind spot detection with the trailer so that's really well designed and that's part of this new system and the new technologies that are available so they've done a really nice job on that as well you've got your cameras which i think are really neat now if you click on the camera here You've got not just your backup and your round view, your wide camera, your overhead, and your side. So if you want to know what's down here, this is part of that visibility. This is all really good to have. Additionally, you've got cameras out the back. You can have cameras pointing downward. See, it actually shows you each camera. Isn't that neat? So you can pick the angle. I want to look at it from this angle. I, isn't that neat? It's, it's like playing like a child. It's so much fun. So there's a lot of neat things you can do depending upon what you need get your trailer towing information where the hitch would be located. The, the receiver is not in here, so just something to keep in mind. And then of course your trailer information, if you want it, all that hitch information is there. This is for parking. This is your park assist. It'll tell you if you're parallel parking, you're really not good at it in a vehicle of this size. It'll help you. It'll search for a parallel parking spot on the right or the left. You just tell it. Or if you prefer perpendicular, maybe you're not so good at backing up, it'll help you with arrival and departure. So that's really nice also because a lot of people are like, eh, I don't know what I'm doing. This thing is just too big. If you're not used to this, this is a great thing to have available. Sirius XM, you've got your Alexa as well, your ambient lighting, which is completely adjustable, and you can pick the colors that you prefer. And I think people like that. They want to have a little bit of personality. Also, that rear media, you can choose what you want your kids to have, both left and right. Maybe you want to shut it off if they're sleeping. It allows you all those different options. So they really thought about the technology in this vehicle and how people use it. And when it comes to technology as a whole, it earns a 10. There are a lot of features in this vehicle. Some of them are plainly obvious and we covered them in technology. So when you're looking at some of the basic features and what's available, that's awesome. But you're also having available to you on the left side of the steering wheel, just below the air vent, you have your trailer towing information. It has built in trailer brakes, hill descent, you can raise or lower the height of this vehicle if needed, and that's also important if you're going through anything that might concern you. You also have the massaging seat buttons on the door, 
and all of these are pretty normal door controls. Going to the steering wheel itself, like I said, we've got the cruise control on the left and the heated steering wheel and some safety features, and on the right you have your audio setups. Beyond that 38-inch OLED screen, you've got your controls when it comes to the climate. So these are pretty easy. These are a little hard to use at night. That's the one thing I want you to be aware of. You've got your shifter lever here, and beyond that, you've got your regular multimedia controls. We're pretty all used to this, the home, the reverse, you know, setting up the vehicle, the information you would need, your volume and any information on the vehicle. Over here, you have USB-C and USB connections, storage, cup holders, pretty normal. Now let's go into the center console. When you lift this up, you'll note one thing. This is for a phone to be charged. That is your wireless charging port. And it's nice because you just slot your phone in and it's done. Going back to underneath this particular center console, this is an option and it is an air-cooled box. Good if you've got formula, you want to put your lunch in there, maybe it's hot outside, maybe you need to have medication kept cold. This is for your power source, USB-C, USB. Everything is here, and that's how you turn that refrigeration on and off. That is an option, by the way. You do not have to have this if you want to just have a gigantic center console. When you're looking at features, having these beautiful, gigantic, iPad-like screens in back are the same as what you see in the Tahoe. We covered that in our Tahoe reviews. So if you're considering a Tahoe versus an Escalade, check that out as well. You can see how they turn on. This is the wireless headsets. And what you're seeing here is your ability to see what is up front as well as back here. So you can put in your USB if you want to see the navigation screen. As far as navigation, you can see what's right here in front of you on the navigation screen, the same as you would see in the front. And then just like that, you can go back to what's available, whether you want to watch something, connect in your Chromecast, something through an HDMI, or navigation, USB-C music. So there's a lot of options, and this allows you to do everything and adjust it the way you want. Again, you can adjust the brightness and your audio playback and so forth. That is really nice. It's a nice touch for those sitting in the back seat. There are a ton of features on this car, and it does add up besides this amazing, gigantic sunroof. You've got the ability to put the seats up and down from the center overhead console. There is a lot of features in this vehicle, and I really think they did a nice job, especially with the materials and so forth. It's a little shiny, not my kind of Tiger Wood styling, but it is real. I mean, I'm just not a fan of this cloth material as a feature. I just worry how it's gonna wear over time. There is additional storage here that's uh, just next to your legs on both sides, and a gigantic glove box. Overall, I, I love this vehicle. I think they did a great job. I'm just a little worried about the soft materials that are cloth, and I just think that they may wear over time and that may impact the resale value of this vehicle. But I do love the two-tone colors. I do love all the features. I love the original Cadillac logo, which they've done a nice job. And overall, for features, it earns an eight. Part of the all new design for the 2021 Cadillac is the exterior and the interior, obviously. Big, gigantic grill, gigantic logo. I do like this Cadillac logo. It's part of the original styling of this vehicle. LED lights and these D DRLs, daytime running lights and marker lights, when you hit the unlock, reminds you this is the vehicle. Easy to find it in a parking lot. The back also lights up like this as well, just reminding you where your vehicle is. This is a huge vehicle, but you can still lose it in a parking lot full of a lot of SUVs. Down below, they did a nice job, make it nice and clean, that Cadillac family look, and they've done a really nice job. Let's go around to the side. Our vehicle is riding on 22-inch all-season Bridgestones. These are alloy wheels. They're really nice, and they're really clean looking. I do like the matted out logo too. Nice little details when you're buying a vehicle like this because it is big and you don't need to draw more attention to it because it draws plenty of attention on its own. Moving further back, this is a very large vehicle with a rack on the top, which is good if you need things. Part of the design is these running boards. This is an option when you open the door. The running boards are there and when you're done, the mirrors tuck in and the running boards tuck up, of course, when you're parking the vehicle. Going further back where the third row is located, you have visibility and the monochrome Cadillac logo. This chrome panel here, this piece, this design element is really meant to have this vehicle look a little bit shorter. It is a huge vehicle. There's plenty of glass back here, but they've done a nice job trying to work with the size they have because this is the segment that demands this size of vehicle with this kind of storage. So you got to kind of work with what you've got. It's a huge pallet. 
The design in the back is cool. You can see the marker lights letting you know this is a vehicle. This is a very large vehicle and having this LED notification is, makes it easier to find it in a parking lot. They did a nice job. They also tucked up the wiper blade underneath the rear spoiler, which Lincoln should have done. And I think it's a great idea. Every manufacturer should be doing that. And it allows you to open the glass and open the tailgate. We'll show you that when we get to the back for storage. Big Cadillac logo to remind the people around you what you're driving. And then of course you've got towing capacity, which comes standard on all vehicles. We talked about that in handling. You've got your Escalade logo here and more information on the car. This is a really cool redesign of this vehicle. When you're driving something this huge, you want to make a statement, but not that big of a statement, but it's a Cadillac. So it does have a lot of positives to it. And for design, we gave it a nine. There is a lot of quality components, both inside and out in the Cadillac. This is the premium vehicle. This is their gigantic flagship car. And so with that, you have to make the best both exterior and interior. And Cadillac has done that. They've really put together a lot of thought in the materials, the quality the audio system, the quality of the paint, the panels. This is an American made car. This is about hauling a lot of people and getting a lot of things done. And when it comes to quality, the full redesign of this vehicle, it earns a 10. Coming around to the back with the third row up, you got about 25.5 cubic feet of storage, which is an improvement over the previous generation. This is the long wheelbase, so you're going to get everything. When you put all the rows down, the third rows down, the second row is down, you have 121 cubic feet of storage. That's quite an improvement over the previous generation. Now remember that you also have some pretty cool options here, places for storage, and underneath here, spare tire is underneath. You've got your AKG audio system, big subwoofer back here. That's over on this side. And on this side, you have the ability to put the seats up and down just by pressing the button. And there it goes down. Really good to have for the second row as well. And boom, those are down. And that really makes a difference. Let me show you how much space you have. You will not believe it. That's 121 cubic square feet of storage. I think you can move a kid into college or your friend into an apartment with not much effort. You're going to be getting a lot of calls when people need to haul things. That's really impressive. In addition, there's also buttons to put up the third row. And that makes it a lot easier when kids have to jump in back. They've done a really nice job with all the square footage on this car, thinking about the usage, who's using it, what they're using it for. So if you're going snowmobiling or you're going boating or you're going camping or you're hauling or whatever you're doing in your daily life where you just have a very large family, this would be something that would meet your needs. Now there's a lot of direct competition here, so you have to remember that they're all fighting for your dollar. And when you're looking at the value of this vehicle, it starts in at $76,195. However, this is a loaded vehicle. This is a platinum, it is a luxury, and it's got every option under the sun, including the night vision, the side steps, the puddle lights. Our test vehicle came in at 112.5. Now there's a big difference there because you don't have to buy the special paint. If you want the special paint, but all these start to add up. So keep that in mind when you're comparing each vehicle. Same thing with Mercedes. Their GLS has a ton of options and you start adding all those up and suddenly the price of the vehicle gets to be a lot more expensive. Of course, you might want to check the insurance the insurance on a Mercedes is probably going to be higher than that of a Cadillac or a Lincoln. When you're looking at the total value of the 2021 Cadillac Escalade, this vehicle came in with a nine. The 2021 Cadillac Escalade has two engine options. Like I said, you've got the diesel, you've got the gas, you have five different trim levels, sport direction or luxury direction. Each of them have platinum and higher trim levels. So you can start adding these vehicles up pretty quickly. But if you need a vehicle that has luxury, that has all the goodies, all the safety and performance that you would want, this is certainly a consideration. All 10 categories, the Cadillac Escalade really impresses. I'm really impressed with the Super Cruise technology. That is something a lot of people have been asking for. This is not full autonomous self-driving. Don't think that it is. It's assisted and nothing is full autonomous available on the market as of 2021. So keep that in mind. But if you're looking for those safety features with all the distractions we have in life, the safety features are here. Some you'll have to adjust for your personal needs. Some you may not want and you might want to shut it off. I do recommend leaving that cross traffic alert on. This is a big vehicle and you can tell I'm 5'8 and I just feel small next to this car. But when you're adding up all 10 categories, the car coach reports total is 
91. Now, how does that compare to the Lincoln? You can check that out up here. We have the review for the Lincoln. We've also done the Mercedes GLS. Our channel is listed down below. You can check out our website, Car Coach Reports, in English and Spanish. We've reviewed a lot of vehicles, pretty much anyone you can think of that competes in these categories. Also, don't forget to check out our podcast, Total Car Score with Carl Brower and Javier Mota. And if you want more car smarts, you can check out my book, Lauren Fix's Guide to Loving Your Car. There's a link for that down below. We'll take you right to Amazon. We do appreciate the support on that. If you got value from this video, make sure to give it a like and a share. We appreciate your support on our Patreon page. Please put your comments down below. Did you like the Cadillac Escalade? Did you not like the Cadillac Escalade? We want to know. We want to open that conversation. If you bought something else, did you buy the Lincoln? Did you buy the Mercedes? Did you choose something else even different? We want to know if you bought the Cadillac, do you love it? We want to keep that conversation open, create that conversation so we can all learn and make wise choices. Thank you so much for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.